you go. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, my first guest this evening is CNN's chief medical correspondent and the host of the podcast Chasing Life. He's just written a new book, World War C Lessons from the COVID 19 Pandemic and How to Prepare for the Next One. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. <laughs> Again, thanks for coming back. What a pleasure! Thank you for having me. So we're saying backstage. This is fourth uh, fourth time in about 18 months. Yeah. You were my guest the night we had to bug out, you know, on March 12th of 2020, where there's no audience, just you and me, yeah. and and John. I think that was it on stage. Yeah. And um, I've really been grateful for you coming back every so often to tell us where we are, and especially right now because when you were here in June. Well, felt like things were going in the right direction. Yeah. Okay. And and now I don't know what direction we're going in. <laughs> I'm a little turned around because I knew that Delta would come in and there'd be a surge. Where? What? What's going on? Well, yeah. You know, it, it, it is hard, and and there's a great amount of humility I think you have to have in trying to predict where things are going. But what I would say is that we're we're still sort of we're in the storm of virus. You know, we can't see the virus. If you could see it. There's still a lot of virus out there mm -hmm. in the community. But there's a lot of positive indicators as well. There's some clear skies ahead. Numbers good. are falling. I had, well, good. Well, that's good. Because I had, I had heard in some projections in late August, I had heard that basically by the first week of October, we would see a marked change. There would be a, a major drop-off yeah. in infection rates. Is that happening? We're starting to see that. We're starting to see that. You know, I've often thought about the, the country as my own patient. I think that's just how I think about things. Mm -hmm. And I think... If I was talking to the family of the patient, I'd say the patient is still in the intensive care unit, but we are getting ready to maybe move the patient out of the ICU onto the general care floor. There's some positive indicators here. Case rates coming down, hospitalizations coming down. And what you also see from looking at other countries around the world, and even historically, that after this surge, which we're in right now, which has been, it's been really tough. I mean, I've always been honest with you about that. It's been really tough. But after this surge, usually it flattens out and hopefully it stays down. If I have been vaccinated, which I have, I'm fully vaccinated, and, and I get a case, let's say I get a breakthrough case, what is my viral load compared to someone who gets it and is not vaccinated? Do we have similar viral loads? Yeah, you, you, you can for a period of time. But let me, let me just remind you of one thing, though, which I think is really important, sometimes gets lost. Your chance of getting infected because you're vaccinated, even a breakthrough infection, is much, much lower than an unvaccinated person. Maybe that inherently makes sense, mm -hmm, but sure. it's about eight to ten times lower. So the idea that you'd even wow. carry the virus at all is a lot lower. If you do carry the virus, you could develop uh, enough virus in your nose and your mouth for a period of time that is similar to an unvaccinated person. So I can be contagious. So you could be contagious, but it comes down much faster as well. So an unvaccinated person could be contagious for seven to ten days, whereas for you it might be two to three days. So harder to get, less likely to pass on. That's right. I saw an interview you did the other day with a healthcare professional, a nurse who had decided not to get the vaccine. Mm. She was one of, of uh, several nurses that you were profiling there. Uh, what do you make? What is the best rationale, or rather, what is the rationale you're hearing from healthcare professionals, doctors and nurses, who are deciding not to get it? Because I have, I have some loved ones in my life who I have tried to convince to mm. get it and say, I just care about you. I, I, I'm sure you're doing your own research, as you say, but I can't imagine what it is because I see no legitimate research saying that this isn't the right thing to do. What rationale are you getting from healthcare professionals? Well, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, there's times that I've sat in my basement and literally screamed at the top of my lungs. Mm. I mean... I, I just, it's, it's hard to fathom, you know, when this, this is available and it could really help end this, this collective trauma we've been going through. But what I would say is healthcare workers, I think, are subjected to the same ideological pressures that everybody else. Mm -hmm. In fact, it sort of tracks with the vaccine hesitancy in the population, 20 to 30%. I'll tell you quickly, Stephen, you know, I, I have this guy who came by to fix the air conditioning the other day. Guy probably in his mid-70s, mm -hmm. really nice guy, wore a mask, he fixed the air conditioning. I didn't know if he knew who I was. Mm -hmm. He was walking out, and he, he apparently knew who I was because he said, can I ask you a question? 
I said, sure. He goes, should I get a vaccine? And I said, yeah, absolutely. He said, the reason I ask is I got a stent in my leg, and I, was, and I thought maybe that would cause blood clotting, and I, I didn't know if that would be a problem. I said, well, you're right. There was headlines on blood clotting and, and, and the vaccines, but I got to tell you, you're 80 times more likely to develop blood clots from the disease versus the vaccine. He said, oh, thank you. You know, I, I appreciate that. The reason I ask is because my daughter died of COVID last week. Wow. Yeah. And last thing she said to me before she went on the ventilator was, please get vaccinated. But then I've been worrying about this clotting thing, and I called my doctor, and my doctor hadn't called me back, and you're the first person I saw. So I'm wow. asking you. And Stephen, it broke my heart. And, and it made me realize that, you know, I've, I think I'm a pretty empathetic guy, but I think there's this tendency to say those anti-vaxxers and this. And there are some that are just starting to start SHIT. But there are some people who still have legitimate legitimate concerns, and you know, I, hope we, I really hope we reach those folks. Have you gotten a booster? I, thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I haven't gotten a booster. The boosters are, are really recommended for people over the age of 65 okay. and who have pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, there may be a situation where ultimately they'll recommend it more widely, but I think for now, I'm happy that I got the vaccine. The vaccine worked really well. Are you, you, you have any sense that it, whether like three months from now they're going to say, yeah, yeah, everybody? You know, I, I, don't, I don't know necessarily. I mean, you know, in a way, we kind of got boosted. We got the two shots, you know, separated. Mm -hmm. And if the protection continues to be as good as it is, I think that there's, there may not be a need. We have to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, I will ask Sanjay how we can become pandemic-proof. Stick around. Mm -hmm.